Hey traders, in this video, we're gonna be breaking down how to set up Thinkorswim and make it less confusing. Uh, when you first sign up for Thinkorswim and you open the platform, this is what your default settings are gonna look like. It's a little crazy, a lot going on, so we're gonna narrow it down and make it efficient and easy to read. We're gonna start on the left-hand side of the screen. You have account info, live news, trader TV, watch list, and quick chart. You, these are all known as widgets and you can change them around. I leave account info up, you wanna see that. I leave live news up, you wanna see that. Trader TV, don't need to see it. So you can click on this button here and go to delete gadget. We don't need that. We're gonna leave the watch list up and the quick chart on whatever ticker that you're watching, you don't need that either. So you can click on this and delete gadget. Now down at the bottom left hand side, you're gonna see a plus sign here that says add gadget. Click on that and you do wanna add the message center. So if you have an alert that goes off on a stock, for example, here I have SMCI at or below 759, that will pop up right here in your message center. Now this bar on the left, you can drag this to be as wide or as slim as you would like it to be. You'll notice that if you drag it wide, you'll see this yellow two right here. This is a symbol link. What that's gonna do is link your watch list to your charts. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but for right now, you want to unlink it. So you're gonna click on the two and unlink that. Also, under your watch list here, you're gonna see all of these different things. Last, net change, bid, ask. There's a gearbox here that you can click and you can change the settings of your uh, watch list and what you're seeing. So click on that, click customize, and I just remove the bid, remove the ask, uh, remove the net change. You probably do wanna see the symbol, of course. You wanna see the last. You also wanna see the percentage change and I like to add volume. So we're gonna click on percentage change here, add item, and we're gonna click uh, or type over here and type volume, and we're gonna add volume. Click okay, and so now we can see the last trading price of our stocks, the percentage change of those stocks, and the volume that they were trading at. Now to edit this watch list, let's say you don't want these stocks here, you just highlight the symbol, and backspace and press enter and that will delete that symbol. Or if you wanna add a symbol, click at the very bottom and just type in, let's say you wanna add Tesla, T-S-L-A. Now you can add a symbol and you can make this watch list as big as you want to or as small as you want to. The next thing we're gonna talk about is your charts. So under the account setting at the top, you'll see monitor, trade, analyze, scan, market watch, click on charts. That's gonna bring up a blank page. Why? Because we're not looking at anything yet. The setting over here that we changed, the link symbol for the watch list, link this to red, red. So we're linking the chart here with red, right, to the watch list, which is also red. So that way, if we click on a chart on our watch list, it will also pull it up over here on our big screen. The next thing that we're gonna do is clean this chart up some. It's pretty ugly to look at, so we're gonna right click on the chart itself, go down to style, go down to settings, and under alerts, we don't want this to show alerts. That's this big yellow line across our screen. We don't wanna see that, it interferes with our charting. Um, so we wanna show arrows only. We're gonna click show arrows only, click apply, and that's gonna move that alert all the way to just be a little triangle on the right hand side of the screen. So we can still roughly see where the alert is set at, but we don't have that long line across our screen. The other thing we wanna do is merge the volume uh, box down here with our chart itself. It doesn't really bother me being down here, but I think it'll be a cleaner look if we can just check this box that says layout overlap volume and click apply. Now our volume is set on the chart itself. We also want to go to our time axis and change our expansion area to 150 bars to the right. That way we can just see this blank space to the right of the chart and kind of navigate where the stock could potentially go from where it's currently at. Makes it a little easier and cleaner to read. Now we do have one more change to make. We're gonna right click and go to style, back to settings and under the appearance. I like these candles to be filled, so we are going to check the box that says fill up. Click apply and okay. For the rest of these tabs, you can go through them and change things if you'd like. Uh, I just leave it all set to default. So favorite time frames, leave that set to default. Equities, no change there. Options, no change there. It's future and Forex, I don't trade those, so we just leave those as they are as well. Click okay and we are set.
Now, the next thing I want to talk about are drawing tools. So if you click the scroll button in the middle of your mouse, the, the rolly button there, it's going to pull up a quick box here with all of your drawing tools. You have a selector here where you can just grab the chart and move it back and forth. Uh, you have a, a pointer where you can click on trend lines, for example, and press the delete button and delete those or click on the trend line and drag it and move the trend line. You have a trend line tool itself. So when you use this one, you can go in either direction. So you're going to left click for a starting point and up, down, left, right, wherever you want to go with that. You have a price level tool, which is basically a trend line, but this one's nice because you can just double click and it'll give you a horizontal line on the chart itself. You have arrows. So if you want to denote a certain spot on the chart, you can just click the arrow tool and everywhere that you click on the chart will give you an arrow. An oval and rectangle tool are exactly what they sound like. It's going to give you an oval if you have the oval tool selected or a rectangle if you have a uh, the rectangle tool selected. The rest of these you do not really need to worry about. Maybe Fibonacci retracements if you want to look into that on your own time you can do that. Uh, but those are the main ones that I use. So the pan, pointer, trend line, price level, arrow, oval, and rectangle. And all of that is uh, is accessed by the center button on your mouse. Now, if you want to delete them, you simply click on them and press the delete key on your keyboard. So highlight whatever it is that you're looking at with the left mouse button, press delete to delete it. If you'd like to zoom in on your chart, click uh, on the chart using the pointer tool and then drag to the right. And that's going to give you a highlighted area that you will be zooming into. Right, so you can just keep zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. And if you want to zoom out, you just double click on the chart and it'll zoom you all the way back out. Let's move over into studies, also known as indicators. So you're going to right click on the chart again, go down to studies and you want to click on edit studies. These are on the left hand side. All of the different studies are indicators that you can add. There's quite a bit that you can go through. It's all personal preference, but I'll give you mine that I use. Number one, we're going to type in MACD, M-A-C-D. Left click here, click on add selected, and you'll see it adds it to the right. We are going to type in RSI. You want to add RSI, add selected, again, adds it to the right. Uh, I like to use EMAs, which are known as exponential moving av averages. So you just type in expo. And I use a few of these. It's moving average exponential. I'm going to add four of them. One, two, three, four. And we're going to go through and edit those here in a second. Uh, VWAP, V-W-A-P. Also click that and you will want to add that one as well. Click apply and OK. Now we have a chart that's looking like a trading chart, right? Uh, the RSI and MACD are going to be located at the bottom. I like to see my screen, so I'm going to minimize this order entry tool. We don't need that, so that's just clicking that button. Uh, RSI, we're going to move that down some. MACD, we are going to move this down some. And we are going to change the settings from all of those moving averages to the numbers that we want. So again, right click, go to studies, and go to edit studies. And we have the nine EMA set by default on all of them which is fine for one of them, but not all. So we're gonna to go to the right here, click settings. We're gonna change the length from the nine EMA. We wanna change that to 200. Then on another one, we are going to change the nine EMA to the 50 EMA. Click okay. And then we're gonna change one of these nine EMAs to the 21 EMA. Now click okay, click apply and okay. Now all of a sudden we've got those four nine EMAs spread out. The very bottom one here, uh, the largest one, if you just double click it, it'll tell you which one it is, your 200 EMA. I wanna change the colors because they're all of them being the same color, not gonna work for me. So this one, you know, I'd like to change it to maybe like a dark blue. Okay, we're gonna click apply for that one. Your next one's going to be the 50 EMA. Maybe we wanna change the style of this from a solid line. Maybe we wanna do like a dashed line on this one and we'll just change it to green. Click apply and click okay. Uh, the nine EMA, maybe we'll just leave that one teal. Uh, the next one's gonna be your 21 EMA. Uh, we can leave that as a solid line, but maybe we wanna change this color to an orange. Click um, apply and then okay. Now we need to go in and change our VWAP settings because if we move this time frame here, from the daily chart time frame, which is the wider time frame, to a five minute time frame, you see it's really jumbled up. Lots of things going on here, right? 
Um, this is your VWAP band. So it's gonna give you that negative 2.0 deviation, which is gonna be your bottom one, your VWAP middle, which is gonna be your middle one, and then your VWAP to the top side, which is gonna be this top band. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot to look at, I, I will admit. Um, but we want to change the the color. So the middle one, let's just change this maybe to like a purple, right? Uh, okay. And then we want to go to our upper band. Our upper band, we want that to stand out. So let's make that a red. And then our lower band, uh, maybe we want that one to stay yellow. So we'll click OK, apply. So now our VWAP looks like this. We've got our purple in the middle, red up top, and yellow at the bottom. We have just a couple more changes and we're almost done. So on the message center, I like to have that all the way at the bottom because my watch list typically gets pretty big. So move the message center down to the bottom, enough where you can read the messages coming through, but uh, you don't need the message center all the way up at the top. So you can build your watch list out as far as you want. The, uh, the account info and all of this on the left, I just make it the smallest bar that I can. Under the trade tab, we're gonna move over to the right and go to the active trader. This is, our, this is where we will usually be placing our orders. If you've seen any of my other videos about how I place orders, um, this is what I'm using, the active trader. So let's talk about how to set this up because we don't need all of this information here. On the right hand side, there is a customize, it's a gearbox customize button. We're gonna click that and click customize. We don't need to see all of this information. So volume, we can remove that item. Uh, the bid size, <laughs> We can leave that one, but we don't need to see the buy order. So remove buy orders. Ask size, we could leave that. We don't need to see the sell orders. So remove the sell orders. And then over on the left side, PL of the open, we do want to click on that and click add item and click OK. So we should have something that looks somewhat like this after the end. So if we're wanting to enter into a position, we can enter in and it'll give us our PL. Uh, on the open over here on the right. Some traders don't like to see their PL. I'm one of those traders that do. And that's it. That's all we have for how to set up Thinkorswim. You can always go through and customize these colors the way that you see fit. In future videos, I will talk about how to use all of these indicators effectively for your trading. Thank you for your time, and I hope the videos helped you out.